20,000 real estate investors, from people who've inherited homes to sophisticated investors with over 1,000 properties. Today, Renters Warehouse manages over 22,000 homes across the country, making them the largest real estate investment company in America. Join the thousands and buy or sell your next rental on the Renters Warehouse online marketplace and experience stress-free property management today. Visit RentersWarehouse.com and take advantage of their free rental property analysis. Before you know it, you'll be watching your properties perform while you do more of what you love with the people you love. Renters Warehouse. List, invest, rent, all under one roof. Did everyone agree with you? Let's find out. Choose your news on the Candy Mike and Todd Show. Yep, everybody probably agreed with you because you make the best choices. I'll give you a little taste of our stories, and you have been texting your votes. Candy Mike or Todd at 98973, including a lot of book quotes for me this afternoon. That's the Online Trade Academy text line at 98973. You are very creative from the 206. I cannot choose between Candy and Mike, so I'm going to split the difference and vote for Todd. Oh, good. I'm the leftover. Josh in Tacoma. Pretty nice. Thanks, Congratulations, leftovers. That. That's nice. Uh, from the 360. Candy, I love my beverages. Tell me more. From the 253, my favorite book as a young person. I carried that book around for two years, Mike. You gotta talk to me about it. Choose your new scoreboard. Currently says Todd sitting at 24. Mike also at 24. I am at 25. And may the odds be ever in your favor. Congratulations. We have a lot of readers, Mike. You are the winner of Choose Your News today. And I'm sure, so I would, so based on what I said so far, mm -hmm. uh, Candy, obviously, you know, you've been looking at the text lines. I'm sure people said what book it was. Um, people have been quoting the book, and then I had to start looking it up, and I was like, is Todd, it, are you, you there, God? It's me, Margaret? You should because uh, uh, people tuning in, it was a great pitch. It's a synopsis of it, so everyone else is joining in. All right, so uh, this is about, I'll get I'll get, get away from the, uh, the prior Robert Frost poem. I'm depending heavily on Robert Frost these days and Jeopardy. <laughs> um, so we've got uh, the Robert Frost is your clue on this one. This is the most popular. In fact, 52 years ago, this spring, right around now, the best-selling young adult novel of all time was published. Uh, as, the, as this story says, to adulation and outrage, it was 1967. Youth culture wasn't exactly new, but something about this particular book that did away with grown-ups' interference and spoke directly to teen readers in a new way. In fact, it's credited for changing the way young adult books were even written and the way they approached young adults, especially those with problems. The R.S. Mm -hmm. surrounding this classic tale, uh, and I can tell you, so I'll give you a couple of clues. I'll give you a couple of clues. One, you may not have known that the author was a woman. I already know. All right. And Candy, I'm sure you know as well. I had to so look it up. It I is, know the movie. It is the anniversary of the publication of The Outsiders, yes. which was by far my favorite book when I was probably – I don't know, 11, 12 years old. I must have read it, and I am not exaggerating, maybe 35 times. Yeah. My from friends the, and I had it entirely memorized. From the 425, Mike, stay gold, pony boy. <laughs> and then there's multiple <laughs> quotes like that that I'm going through right now. So everybody very much wanted to hear about The Outsiders. It is a, there's, so there's a terrific piece on the website, Medium. Uh, just do Medium and do uh, Outsiders. You'll find this, this uh, story, and it's about a great picture of Essie Hinton, I didn't know my entire adolescence that Essie Hinton was a girl. And the funny thing about it is that was an intentional act yeah. by her publisher. She was, when she got her book contract for this book, the day she graduated from Will Rogers High School in Tulsa, Oklahoma, was the day she got her book contract. She wasn't old enough to sign it herself. Her mom had to sign it along with her. But she even said, like, she wasn't a kid who ever felt the need to belong to any group. And so because she drifted around all the kids in her neighborhood, and, and my guess is that she was like accepted among these kids, that she drew from all of these experiences when she wrote the book, which actually the original, her original title was A Different Sunset. And then the publisher said, no, 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 we're going to go with something different. They went to The Outsiders. And it became, an, and if you remember, in what was 1983 or 84, the movie, when, when yeah. the Francis Ford Coppola movie yep. came out. Yep. And I'm still, I, you know, it's funny. I haven't seen that since it came out. But when I read this story about this book, because it really was, it was a formative book for a lot of us, uh, it makes me want to go back and actually, Matt Dillon, you know who's, all right, surprise, can you name one of the primary characters in this, Tom, an actor? Tom Cruise, Patrick Swayze. Um, you're going to miss this one, uh, though. Matt, uh, Matt Dillon. Very good. So um, far, you're right on. Uh, yeah, I'm picturing uh, who played the young guy. I can't remember his name now. Ralph Macchio. Uh, Ralph Macchio was Freddy in Kid. that. Uh, and uh, there's Here's one, one I did not remember. Yeah. Oh, Emilio yeah. Estevez. Emilio Estevez, right. right. The one I didn't remember, Leif Garrett. That's right. Leif Garrett was right. in this movie, right. and I still don't remember what he and, did in the movie. Now, a generation of young people just said, 
Wait, a leaf? leaf. Patrick yeah. Swayze. Rob Lowe. He was Lowe. a big deal back then. Yeah. Rob, Rob Lowe. Lowe. Soda Pop. It was exactly. Then there was a follow-up book. Man, we could go on. Oh, no, there's two follow-up books. Yeah. Rumblefish and, and That Was Then, This Is Now. Yeah. Oh, I love That Was Then, This Is Now, but it made me sad. Wow, we could do a whole hour on this. We could do a whole hour nice on this. Nice job, no, Mike. No, let's not. It's good. That's so good. coming up next hour, them, right? uh, we will go through the, the, uh, the, the S.E. Hinton Trilogy. Next hour on the Candy Mac and Todd Show, we'll spend an hour going through the S.E. Hinton Trilogies. Yeah, you right? can say that. Yeah, those, right. I, all those, because they all sort of overlapped each other, and they all had the same, can, especially Rumblefish. Candy won't mind. Uh, either that or I won't mind very much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, there's going to be a rumble. Uh, either that or we'll talk about uh, how the tariffs are going to affect people's pocketbooks, tariffs being basically a tax. Uh, Tracy Taylor is going to check traffic for us now. Tracy? What an ugly drive right now on Southbound 405 getting out of Bell.